Okay, in this video, I'm just going to look at the standard selects that we get in most widgets uh, with Elementor uh, and how we can improve those. Um, so if we look at the uh, Jet Smart Filter, for example, um, we've just got a standard select here with some countries. Um, if we look at the form, Elemental Form, so standard form with a select, it's just a standard select. Okay, which is fine if you've only got a couple of options um, or a few options. What if you've got a lot of options like countries? And in this case, I've got like 200 there. What if we had, you know, 1,000 options in there uh, or 500 even? Uh, you've got to scroll through the whole lot just to get to the option you want. So there is a library called Select2, a JavaScript library. And what it does, it turns a... Standard select like this, which is what we just saw, similar to what we just saw over here, into a filterable select like this. So I can type in here and type C-A-L, and it's filtered to just California. So that's a much easier way to select things. So if I type H-A-W for Hawaii, all I get is Hawaii. Uh, if I type U-N-I, there's nothing in there, because they obviously don't have a lot in there seeing what they do have that we can filter on. Not a lot. Okay. So how do we turn uh, selects like this into selects like that uh, in Elementor? So the simple way to do it is there's a JavaScript uh, function that you download, which adds a function to jQuery, uh, and then we just call the select to method to turn that select into a select two. So how will we do that with these? So what I'm looking at is a, first of all, we've got to get the select two library. So I've got a code snippet here and I'll export this and put it in the description where what we're telling it to do is when you enqueue the scripts for WordPress, uh, we just give this a name. I've just called it WPG hyphen uh, select two. Uh, so we're going to get the styles for it. Uh, we're going to get the JavaScript for it as well as a script, and we're going to tell it to have jQuery as a dependency. Now, this adds a function to jQuery, so jQuery needs to be loaded before this loads, which is why we add that as a dependency. Otherwise, it might load earlier, and then you'll just get an error because jQuery doesn't exist. So that's uh, that. Now, you only need to do this if you haven't got a theme or plugin that already includes these libraries. So what I would normally do is if I deactivate this here and go to our page, I'll bring up my Chrome tools, and I'll look at my network and JavaScript, JS, do a control F5, sort this here by name, and what I'm looking for is anything that says select to, and I don't see it being loaded. So what we need to do is make sure it does get loaded, by activating this snippet. Now, if I refresh this page, I can see now my, where are we? Select two library there. So I can see that's now being loaded. So just check this first. So check your theme or plugins that you might have. You could have an extension for Elementor or any other plugin that, that loads a select two library. If it does, you do not need to load this. If it doesn't, then you need the snippet um, or load these through your functions.php in your child theme or whatever. Uh, this is an easy way to, oh, I love using the um, code snippets. It's an easy way to go in there and just activate or deactivate these as needed. So we'll leave it activated and we'll come back over to our uh, page. Now, what I've got here is a, HTML box. I've added my code in here. I've loaded the libraries. Now I need to do something with it. So what I'm doing here is I'm look, creating a selector variable or constant, and I'm looking for anything that's got the select to class, then following that a select. So if I look at my get smart filter here, and I wish they'd have this option built in, but they just don't. Uh, so we need to do this instead. So what I've done here is I've given that a class of make 
hyphen select to. Um, and then if we look at the actual code generated for that, we'll quickly look at this code. See if we go up the DOM a little bit. Where is my widget? There it is there. Widgets, yes. If I'm looking in here, I'm looking for my classes. And where are we? Make select two, there you go. There's a lot of classes on there. So the class of that is on the widget, but the select is actually further down the DOM. So what we need to do in our query is tell it make select two as a class and then look for any selects that are within that um, DOM structure from the make select two downwards. So that will select the select inside that widget. Um, now this form field over here, um, we only want to select, so we might have multiple selects on this form and we only want to select that particular one, the countries. We might have a, a select that's only got a few options, which we don't want to be a select to. So what we need to do is on the on that form field, we need to give it, under the advanced, we need to give it an ID. So we call that form select. Now it's not a straight one-to-one -one ID name, unfortunately, so otherwise we would be just easy, easily just add that to our select list. So if we look at the, the code for that, like that. So what it does, the actual select, the ID is form dash field dash, and then the ID we've given it. So it adds form dash field dash to whatever you set uh, up here. Um, so we need to use that. Come back to our code. And you'll see I'll put a comma here, and then I'll put in that uh, pound or hash, whatever you like to call it, and then the ID of this actual select that's inside that um, uh, form field there. So now we're selecting anything that's there uh, plus anything that's there. So what you do is you, if you wanted more selects on this particular page to be select two, you just add a comma and then add the uh, CSS uh, selector path to that, and that will add that to the list that it creates from uh, jQuery. So jQuery here, oops, all we're doing is we're saying, okay, use the selector that we've defined up here to find all of the elements that we want to apply to and then call the select to method on it. You see straight away, even in our back end, now the reason I've got that is because I've added this little rule here, um, which every time we press a key, on uh, in this particular editor window, it runs the JavaScript, but because we're looking for the DOM content loaded, it will not fire um, because it's already fired when it's loaded. Um, so what we're doing is just a pseudo event here that if we're in the editor preview, um, then dispatch a DOM content loaded event. So every time I press a key, it's going to dispatch this event and run this uh, this script in here. So that's just a little workaround so that this works in the editor. You don't need this if you're just going to check on the front end. So we could actually comment that out if you want to. Um, so it doesn't get confusing in here. Update that. And then we come back to our uh, content page here the, in the front end. Refresh that page. Okay. So now I've got a select two there. Uh, now we need to do some styling on that as well. So if I go in there now and I type uh, UNI, I get that filter to anything that's got a UNI. If I'm looking for Australia or Austria, uh, it just filters to Australia, Austria. Same with this select here. Whoops. So there you go. So we've turned a standard select into a select two uh, by simply adding this code here. Uh, now, I've added some style to make it look more like our other form fields. Uh, this needs a little bit of work because there's actually some additional um, code here, sorry, additional um, CSS on this form field, which adds another arrow. We probably want to hide that uh, because I've added some padding in there that um, 
isn't on the uh, standard Select 2 CSS. The arrow here is sitting up the top, so we want to look, look for the CSS for that and move that down a little bit. But that depends on the styling that you've got for your form elements. It's entirely up to you. Um, I put it in here just for you know ease while we're developing this. I would then typically take all of this and shift it to my um, site settings uh, uh, custom CSS, so everything's all in the one place. Uh, but that's pretty much how you would do this. Uh, I think it's a great way of doing it. I wish these form elements and the jet elements, all that sort of stuff, I wish they had that built in, but they don't. And this is a way around it. Hopefully that's uh, something you find useful.